Max, you wanna help me take the trees down, huh? Make killing, arr, yeet. Good boy. Now you got more trees to take down, buddy. Good job. I had some debate recently about the Grand Forks Brooks and the Gerber. I mean, I had one guy tell me that if I didn't have pictures or video showing me breaking the Gerber, that it never happened. Um, I just want to show you the handle length. So I scoot that up a little bit. A little bit longer, obviously. Um, I'll weigh them separately. But uh, pulling down a bunch of firewood right now. Um, I know Wrangler Star is not big for the splitting balls. But uh, this old girl gets the job done, even though it needs a new handle. But uh, fell my first tree this year of significant size anyway. You know, I pulled down dead saplings and stuff like that. But uh, this guy's got some girth and uh, fell right where I wanted to. Uh, trimmed off all the juniper on the side here. I'm going to see if I can burn that. Weather's been wet enough lately that uh, they shouldn't bug me about the burning barrel. Um, but I'm just getting this split so it can dry, uh, so we can use it later. The funny thing was, nobody here, this is at my mom's property, knew where <laughs> an axe was, but they expect, expected me to fall this tree using my grandfather's uh, chainsaw, which you'll see later, that um, really just needed some work. No one could even tell me where a real mallet was uh, here at the property. So I end up chopping this damned tree down because uh, the chainsaw would just die. Um, we couldn't get it to go through there. The chain, teeth, bad gas, I mean, you name it, wrong tension. Uh, it did not want to get through this, and I wanted to get it done. I ended up using my Grandfurst Brooks axe, this metal splitting wedge, and uh, my mallet my buddy made for, for me a long time ago, the rebar handle. And uh, took down a tree... I'd say about 20, 22 inches in diameter. Massive tree, really. Uh, it's juniper. I had the entire thing chewed through. Um, I already cut the the stump piece. I should have saved that to show you. Um, and I didn't have my camera with me that day. Uh, so I'll borrow my mom's camera. She's got pictures of it. But uh, about 25 feet tall and uh, had, uh, I swear, only about two inches of heartwood in the middle uh, that was holding this tree from uh, from falling over and uh, this little forest axe and uh, that splitting wedge got it done and it fell absolutely perfect I don't know if you can see here uh, the tree was in the middle of this uh, pink gravel area we just redid that put in all new gravel uh, extend the deck area out but my main issue was it was only about two feet from this uh, brand new heater, heating air unit here my mom's got. And uh, the barbecue, you've seen in other pictures. And this planter, which she didn't want. Obviously, if it hit it, that was fine. But I actually fell that thing perfectly. And, uh, man, I couldn't be happier. It was awesome. I got the stuff, the smaller stuff, the limbs and stuff. So the splitting mall is a little much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trade off. Um, I haven't given this much use since I had it replaced. Um, obviously you can see it's been used. But uh, I just it's my backup. It's the one I keep in the truck. That kind of thing. I prefer the Grand Brooks. It's a little bit heavier. 
one and a half pound uh, head on it but uh, handles a little bit longer and just more substantial really is You have to take this thing out. It wants to fall out when you use it pretty aggressively. Ding and ding, deep into the stump, which is good. This stuff is just gnarly stuff. You guys may have your hard oaks, but juniper is just devil wood, really. It's a good test. I mean, that should have split. There's so many knots in this thing. Look at that. Talk about a knotty piece of wood. Maybe small, but one, two, three, four, five, six knots in it. It's going through, it's not splitting the wood. <laughs> there we go. Picked up two about the same size with very little knots. We'll give that a shot. Gnarly wood.
Huh, getting a little tired. Of course, I have split the entire tree after I delimbed it. So, that'll do that to you. Good enough for a better day. We're high 50s, low 60s. And, uh, rain's holding off a little bit right now, which is great. But here's another very few or small knots in this one. Almost identical. Just has more weight to it. That's all there is to it. There you go. I think a pretty accurate test. Um, split the rest of this stuff. Got a nice pile going. I've never really bad mouthed the Gerber that I can remember. <laughs> it might be on video somewhere. But to say that I haven't had problems with this um, and call me a liar uh, is just not true just because I didn't have a camera. Um, it was actually on the same trip as uh, Lost Lake old video and uh, my buddy was actually throwing his axe I was throwing my knife uh, I have a set of throwing knives never threw this axe and uh, went to get wood and it was kind of punky wood sure enough chopped right off got REI said he'd never seen it but he would be glad to replace it um, under heavy use this does come out it's only held in by a small magnet but I've never had it come out uh, on its own like while in the backpack or anything like that but during heavy chopping you will. And I'll give a weight. Obviously this one's gonna be lighter, but it's just gonna be a backup knife or backup axe for me. Uh, plain and simple. I've had it break and I won't ever be able to trust it again. Um, you know, if you cheat on me, that's fine. I got no hard feelings, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna get back with you. And uh, why don't you say you're sorry, baby? So for me, the quality, the extra weight is worth it. The size is absolutely perfect. I don't mind packing it. Uh, we'll see in this new climate that I'm in now how much wood processing I'm doing. I'm finding a lot of these junipers actually have um, all the lower limbs can be dead and bone dry. So you may not need a large axe or medium axe in this case uh, in the woods. But uh, we will see. Time will tell. But the Grand Fords Brooks Swedish axe is uh, hands down what it's going to be for me. All right, we're gonna give these two a side-by-side uh, -side weight. Here's a, uh, a better look. Uh, handle length difference. Um. I think I might have weighed this uh, in a previous video, but the Gerber, remember it's got the fiberglass handle, but it also has a small saw in there. It is one pound. 12 ounces and an eighth ounce. And I'm almost sure the head of this should be at least a one and a half pounder. So with the handle, if I can get it to balance, is two pounds, two and a three quarter ounce. So really, not a whole lot of difference. Uh, you got what, six ounces? Uh, you know, right away you've got a nice wooden uh, hickory handle. Uh, you got a hollow fiberglass here. Uh, you have a nylon cover for the top. Which you pull all the way down the handle. Um, this you have some rivets on a leather handle. Uh, stack up the actual heads next, next to each other. You say. They're just a little bit slightly different uh, heads as well. This, the Brooks, uh, is definitely, I love the large sweep uh, down to a really fine point and then broadens out. This is a, kind of a classic wedge shape, uh, very triangle, very straight angles. This one, a lot of people say, is a little bit easier to sharpen. Uh, it almost has a secondary bevel on there, uh, just like a uh, 
you know a knife would uh, it's a little bit straighter a little bit you know you got straight angles that you're dealing with slight curve of the belly there and uh, this one is definitely you know what you expect to see out of an axe which is a, uh, a perfect convex uh, edge which is very sharp but also stays sharp and is a stronger tip Now here's a close up. Now this is uncleaned after being, you know, worked on and used. Uh, you can see the uh, small divots in there. I generally have to pull uh, nicks out of this axe more uh, than I do the Grand Forks, uh, Grand Forks Brooks. Uh, here's the Grand Forks Brooks. You see some longer sweep scrapes, but the edge um, is fine it's perfect I don't have uh, with that convex edge I don't have uh, the nicks as much uh, no matter what what I'm chopping what I seem to have done I really enjoy uh, this uh, for bushcrafting uh, if you get your hand up shorter on here uh, I had a video a long time ago that I never really completed but um, it was putting uh, feather sticks with your axe head um, it was called who needs a knife and uh, a couple people had done a video around the same time and I didn't end up uploading it. But you can pull feather sticks down with this thing uh, flawlessly. Now for sharpening and upkeep, uh, if you really need to, um, you can put a file on there uh, to the Gerber which I've used a couple times. Uh, there's a lot of uh, like Lansky pucks. I believe this is an imitation Lansky's, uh, if I remember correctly. It's got a smoother uh, stone side on here. Uh, this thing doesn't really fall apart, but you definitely know when you use it, you've got some grains popping on there. Um, and I'll try and set that up so you can see. Now the best way I've found is just to hold it straight up, just so you're looking down on the blade and you know get it as sturdy as you can and go in circle motions you can see the little bit more stone on the tip because that tip is a little roughened up there and then because I'm right handed I just turn the whole thing around and come at it just like I was just doing You know count your passes and I'm not going to say this thing is dull or useless um, as you saw in the video it works fairly well it's a little bit shorter than the other one but that's no fault of its own uh, the Gerber does make bigger versions of this and a smaller version of this I know uh, County Com has the Fiskars version which is essentially the same thing since they're the same company um, I like I said I just I won't grab this one because I have the choice of both of them um, it, it really comes down to choice and stuff, but because I've had one break, uh, car camping is okay. You know, that having a backup axe is okay. Um, but I'm not going to, you know, if I take a Mora and an axe, I'm not going to take this one. Now, with the convex, um, I'll show you exactly what I carry. You can, you can use this. Uh, as you bring your circles forward, uh, you essentially have to uh, follow that convex. Uh, so as you, you got to cover that side, and in the same spot, you can move down to follow that angle. And uh, um, I use sandpaper. Uh, you'll see in the other video I'm putting together uh, how I sharpen knives and the things I use. I've gotten some questions when I talk about reprofiling blades and stuff like that. Uh, but generally I have a very small pack and I've got a couple pieces of varying grades of sandpaper. Now if I'm hiking to something, sometimes I'll use the little WD-40 pen, uh, pen. But uh, for now we'll just use uh, regular just honing oil and uh, treat it like it's uh, you know like a wet dry sanding paper uh, you can get it wet on there now it's not that I'm not going to recommend this way 
and you'll see in my knife video this is kind of how I do my knives also um, I don't spend money on a lot of big uh, Japanese whetstones uh, they're great I, there's nothing wrong with them um, just for the price and the size of storing them um, I just don't use them so what I do is literally to do a convex uh, blade a lot of people will use uh, foam or even your mouse pad from your computer and essentially that way you're concaving when you push the blade into the hard uh, the soft mouse pad it'll conform to the blade so as you draw you get this natural curl of the blade well your fingers can do the very same thing this also helps with maintaining rust now it takes a little practice to get used to but if you put all three fingertips and you use that the soft pad of your fingertips to get that this is why I don't recommend it um, really if you're new at that because you can slice yourself pretty bad and then if you really want it to shine uh, get some varying grades and um, I usually carry the 220 uh, with my axe at least and then with the other ones I go for a 220 up to a 400 6 or 800 and then I usually carry one over a thousand um, sometimes we'll just carry some double lot uh, steel wool and essentially Your fingers, you woodworking guys can know that your fingers have more nerves in them that can help feel all the slight imperfections. And you do the same thing when you really know, if you're looking for that burr, you get on there, oh yeah, you can get a nice sharp, let me wipe this down real quick. Um, like I said, with my carbon blades, this also helps upkeep on the rust, and uh, I really enjoy it. Alright, now take a look at that, and that's just with 220, and you could do it, you know, that was, what, 30 seconds worth of sharpening. Um, you could easily uh, pop up to 6 and 8 and up to 1,000 and, and get this polished. Not exactly necessary, but it's a great way to keep the rust off your high carbon blades, and uh, I love it for putting on the uh, convex. It's also what I use on the uh, Skeletool, my EDC blade. Now you can also use the 220 just to go over lightly. Get some of the pitch and the very light rust off of the actual steel. Make sure you're not storing it with all that stuff on there. Uh, Ray Mears uses some, uh, some gun oil. Um, you can use like the uh, old weapons oil to kind of keep the rust off of it. Um, there's a couple different ones I prefer to use. Uh, really, it's going to come down to what choice you want. Um, I actually like the uh, some of the light grain uh, polish pastes. Well, I can't seem to find it. Uh, it's usually in my knife cleaning kit, and uh, for some reason it's not there. But um, the polish that I like to use on the knives the carbon knives and even on my axes is the flitz polish um, it's really known in the automotive community for polishing like aluminum wheels and stuff like that but it really gets into the metal and um, you can see a definite difference in the uh, like water repellency of the metal uh, it'll beat up kind of like it's got some polish in it and uh, it seems to work really well for axes and all your high carbon blades uh, you'll watch Ray mirrors and those guys will use the boiled linseed uh, on their handles because I don't know I've never really done that uh, as much to the handles one thing that I found that I really like and it's all natural stuff is uh, an orange oil and beeswax uh, it's called feed and wax and the orange oil really starts to uh, cut some of the dirt and grease uh, off the handle and then the uh, the beeswax really puts a nice uh, finish on it and uh, keeps it protected from the weather smells really nice uh, really cuts that dirt and grease uh, out of the grains 
that you got in there from being out in the mountains. Um, since I can't find my other stuff, I'll put a little bit on the uh, the blade. That beeswax will help keep some of that surface moisture on there. Make sure to get the tip up here. We'll let that sit a little bit and then I'll come back and wipe that off. Uh, you can also use it on the leather. That orange oil and beeswax. It's a nice combination. It's all natural stuff. Really gets the, uh, the leather supple, gets that grease out of it. All right, so either way, performance aside, aesthetics, a warm wood handle, it cleans up well. No matter what you do to the Gerber, it's still just sort of a plastic looking wedged <laughs> axe. Uh, there's something definitely with the uh, beauty of the Grand Forest Brooks, uh, performance aside. Um, I enjoy a wood handle a little bit better, but it really it's going to be your own choice uh, you know the Grand Forks Brooks isn't cheap uh, the Wetterlings is the one I was trying to get but again it was an online order I couldn't find it locally I did find the Grand Forks Brooks locally at a hardware shop uh, they had many different kinds they even have uh, a really nice one for hunters uh, if you're taking their pelts off this whole back section is rounded and polished uh, to help you uh, push the uh, the hide off the meat, uh, which I thought was a very cool idea. I use the hammer side uh, a lot more than I do um, skinning animals. So that's it. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks for watching.